Good evening and welcome to Surgeons. I'm Dr. Scott Rye. I'm Dr. Wesley Hall. Thanks for coming. Today we've got, uh, I think, a very important show. We're going to be meeting with Dr. Sharon Wright, who is a general surgeon. She does breast cancer surgery. We're going to be talking about breast cancer and some of the surgeries that go along with that. Sure. I think all of us know someone personally that's had breast cancer or have a friend that has a friend, right? It's a very common disease. A lot of women have a lot of fear and anxiety, rightfully so, over this. So I hope that we can provide some information and uh, help some people understand what some of their options are. Yeah, I think this is something, like you said, many, many women have fear. Um, and maybe we can get some uh, good stuff. We're certainly going to see some surgery today. Sure. So I'm looking forward to Sharon Wright. She's going to be joining us on the next segment. And we will be back shortly to begin the rest of the show. Welcome back. We are here with Dr. Sharon Wright, who is one of our favorite surgeons to work with and also just a great person to have around because she's funny too. So thanks for coming. We're really glad to have you here. Is she funny looking or is she just funny? Because if you're supposed to be funny, Combination of both. Shoes to fill. Yeah. She said Combination that of both. she wanted to turn this into a Sanjay Gupta thing. I'm not really sure what that is, so <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> well, anyways, thank you very much for coming. We really appreciate you being here. I think the audience really wants to know a little bit more about you. So maybe you could sort of tell us about yourself, your background. Really, what is a general surgeon? Because a lot of people have questions like this. Well, my name's Sharon Wright. I'm a general surgeon, which means I operate on almost everything except hearts bones and brains. So that's why I chose it because I like a real variety and do a lot of different things, take care of a lot of different kind of patients. So it's not just generals, you'll operate on colonels, majors? Yeah, yeah, the occasional private, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> One of the main things that you do is thyroid mm -hmm. surgery, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The other thing that you do a lot of uh, is breast surgery. Yeah, so I focus probably a third of my practice is thyroid and parathyroid endocrine surgery, and then another third is breast surgery, breast cancer surgery, and then the other third is whatever comes across my plate. Sure. Where'd you train? Um, well, I did um, medical school in New York, New York Medical College, and then did general surgery training at Oregon Health Science University in Portland. Sure. What made you want to be a general surgeon? I think I just like the patient interaction from beginning to end. I like taking care of the patient, getting to get really hands-on and fix problems, and then take care of them post-operatively, especially in cancer care, because that can be a lifetime of getting to take care of a patient. One of the things that we actually really like is that your husband, when you all moved out here, is a general surgeon mm -hmm, as well. He mm -hmm. does trauma surgery, that we have the opportunity and the fortunate uh, chance to work with frequently as well. I mean, fortunate for us. Yeah. Not for, <laughs> for him. <laughs> I think it's fortunate for him. I was going to say. <laughs> any rate, but uh, one of the things we're going to talk about uh, today on the show is breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And we have an actual patient that we're dealing with and that we're going to see uh, doing some surgery on. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about breast cancer and what you do with breast cancer surgery. So. Breast cancer in itself is multidisciplinary. There's a lot of different doctors involved and I get the pleasure usually of being the first doctor involved in terms of diagnosis and then just getting to do the simplest part is to remove the tumor. And so depending on characteristics of the patient and characteristics of the tumor, there's a whole smorgasbord of options, but typically it's as simple as me removing the tumor and then bringing in you know, plastic surgeons, you guys, if there's reconstruction that needs to be done. But from there on out, it's a team sport. We have the medical oncologists and the radiation oncologists and the geneticists. We have everybody, so I'm just part of a big team. This is something that I think a, a lot of women are very frightened of. Absolutely. And I know that when we are seeing patients that you might send over to see us, mm -hmm. that is something that we spend a lot of time trying Absolutely. to tell them there are lots and lots of different options. Mm -hmm. We're actually going to go to the hospital and we're going to see a patient right now that we're going to talk about doing surgery on. Mm -hmm. And this is a multidisciplinary thing that we're getting ready to do. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about what we got planned that we're going to see at the hospital here? 
So yeah, so Terry's a very special patient. She's had a, a difficult road. She had diagnosis of cancer several years ago and has been, you know, she was treated in terms of she had a, a lumpectomy, a partial mastectomy and a lymph node biopsy. But unfortunately, postoperatively had a lot of complications in terms of wounds and new masses and things that were very concerning and stressful to her. So finally she came and she just said to me, you know, I'm tired of this. I'd like to just go ahead and do a full mastectomy, which is to remove the entire breast. And so as part of that, we talked about what are the options in terms of what you can do in terms of reconstruction after a full mastectomy. So that's what we're planning today is to do bilateral mastectomies and have Dr. Hall do a chest wall reconstruction. Well, I think we'll just head to the hospital now. And I think during the hospital, um, setting, you're going to tell us more about the option. So I mm -hmm. look forward to that. Thanks for coming. Absolutely. My pleasure. Patients who have a diagnosis of breast cancer are usually patients who are terrified. They're very, very scared. They've been given this diagnosis and now they're planning what their next steps are. When this involves a mastectomy, the general surgeon very well may recommend that they speak with a plastic surgeon regarding potential breast reconstruction. March 29th, last year, I went in. Um, I felt a little lump in, in the shower. And, uh, finally, I go in for my appointment and she walks in and she says, I'm not gonna kick club it. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. It's cancer. And my head just went back. And, it was to me that was, it felt like my death sentence. Because at that time I didn't know about a stage one, a stage two, stage four. I didn't know anything about that. All I heard was cancer. In pre-op we just go over um, the expectations for the day, make sure everybody's on the same page, talk about any concerns or questions they have the day of, and then talk about expectations for the family, how long the surgery will take, and I'll let them know I'll come out and chat with them when we're done. What we're going to do is um, bilateral mastectomies, and then um, Dr. Hall's going to come in and do the reconstruction like he talked about with you. My portion of the operation probably take an hour, hour and a half, and then I'll stick around and help out Dr. Hall with this part too. Okay. 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 That mass is a part of what you're talking about. Oh yeah. And again, the ultrasound makes it look like just a benign fluid collection, kind of like what Dr. Johnson right. had removed too. Right. But I mean, we're it didn't go sure away that. when they removed the fluid. We'll make sure that's yeah. why we're removing it. That's why we're here, right? That's right. Exactly. So we don't have to deal with this anymore, huh? Yep. Uh, she was appropriately anxious, you know, normal to be nervous before surgery. We always talk about my office gives them instructions about nothing to eat or drink after midnight before surgery. Um, other, she was told she could stay up to three days in the hospital. She ended up being able to go home the next day, but anywhere between one and three days. So in the pre-op, she'll meet, she'll see me. We'll go over surgery, the expectations, and just repeat what the plan is. She'll meet the nurse who'll be in the room, who'll be taking care of her, and she also meets the anesthesiologist who talks to her about expectations for anesthesia and questions and concerns in regard to that. So let me tell you a little bit about the anesthesia. What we're going to do is give you a general anesthetic for this, so you're going to go completely to sleep. Okay. You've got your IV in. Before we go back, I'm going to start you off with a little relaxing medicine. Once we're back in the operating room, we're going to put lots of monitors on you. We're going to give you a little oxygen and a mask to breathe. Then with more medicine through your IV, you're going to go completely off to sleep. Once you're asleep, I do put a little breathing device in because I help with your breathing during the procedure. When it's all over and it's safe, that breathing device will come out. We'll go to the recovery room. That will be the next thing you actually remember is being in the recovery room. Okay. Typically for me, I do like to be in the room when the patient's there just to kind of make them more comfortable. They come in, they meet everybody, they talk about, so again, everybody's on the same page so they know what surgery we're doing. And then the anesthesiologist takes over from there and he administers the anesthesia. 
so the patient's ready for surgery. When I went to her and hysterical and crying and fed up and just another lump, I couldn't take it anymore. She had talked with my oncologist and they all got together and said, this lady has got to have these breasts removed. These lumps are coming back. I'm worried about, she was more worried about my sanity than anything. So that's who she says. And I'm gonna send you over to Dr. Hall, Dr. Rye, they're the best. and. I think that you'll do really good with them. And once I met Dr. Hall, I was in love. I knew he was the one. He was the one to do it. In this case, it was no different. Dr. Wright had seen the patient, felt that uh, her best option was going to be with a bilateral mastectomy, or both breasts actually being removed. Because the patient had had so many other surgeries, she was a little more complex and she had a bigger problem on the left side. It was going to require a much, much larger excision. It wasn't just going to be a standard mastectomy. It was going to require removal of a significant amount of tissue. And when I met with the patient, we talked about the different options. One of the options that can be uh, discussed is what's called an immediate breast reconstruction, meaning we reconstruct or begin the process of breast reconstruction at the same time as the mastectomy. And of course, most patients think that's gonna be the best way for me, I wanna do it that way. However, it is not necessarily always the best option. And in this particular case, the patient had a lot of other issues going on. She was very, very nervous. And to deal with a lot of things at one time is sometimes not the best. Don't just jump at the first thing they say. Take the time to sit down, think about your diagnosis, think about what you're trying to do for the rest of your life, and that'll tell you what decision to make. You know, I wish I would have took the time before running to that first surgeon and letting him manage my care. I wish I'd have took the time and went to another one. But I also want to let every woman know, please, please get your mammograms, please. Because I never expected me of all people to get this. And I would have never known had I not went in for that mammogram. So please get your breast examined. That's the main thing I want women to realize. This is not a fluke. It can happen to anyone, and it is happening to women everywhere, every day. So please, don't put it off. Get it done now. And so in her case, what we decided to do was a delayed reconstruction, meaning we're gonna worry about reconstructing or making new breasts after all of her surgery is finished, after all of her therapy is finished, and she doesn't have the stress of having to deal with the breast cancer, with the breast removal. The problem with her case was the amount of tissue that we had to remove on the left side. And that, I felt, was going to require a larger operation. And in this case, the best thing I felt would be to reconstruct just the chest wall defect with a muscle and some skin from the back. And I had discussed this with Dr. Wright as well as with the patient extensively and that was the plan when we were going into surgery. So um, for this particular surgery, it's really important that we did a, a wide prep, which means getting everything sterile with sterile surgical soap. In this case, both sides of the chest. So we did a wide surgical prep. And also prior to surgery, I marked out where my incisions were gonna go because I wanted to make sure, especially on the left side, the side had the history of cancer, I wanted to make sure I incorporated the entire area of concern with the prior wounds and the masses and things like that. So the purpose of a mastectomy as a cancer operation is you need to make sure you get all of the breast tissue. So that means incorporating the nipple, incorporating all the 
breast tissue below the skin. So basically you make an incision and you'll see here, make an incision around the nipple and go in and remove all the tissue all the way up to the collarbone, all the way down to where the abdominal muscles start, all the way over to the breastbone and all the way over on the side toward the breast ends on the, on the latissimus muscle. So ends up being, even with a small incision, you can get to all of that tissue and remove the entire breast. So the right side is, is a typical mastectomy and in incorporating the nipple again. You can make a pretty small incision, go down and remove all that tissue and then bring the edges of the skin together for a really nice cosmetic outcome. On the left side obviously we needed to take a much bigger uh, piece of tissue because we wanted to make sure we removed the prior scar, the prior area that had radiation, the prior area with the cysts that she had had the several surgeries after her cancer surgery. So that's why we made a much bigger incision and that we would have not been able to close in the standard fashion, bring the skin back together. So that's why we ended up doing the chest wall reconstruction. In this particular case, we pretty much had planned to see what we saw. So that's good. No, no improvisation that had to be done. No making up stuff on the fly. We sort of knew exactly what the plan was to reconstruct the chest wall. And in this case, uh, it's pretty standard. The muscle from the back, called the latissimus dorsi muscle, is going to be used to carry some skin from the back, and that will actually fill in the defect that is made, in this case, from the rather large extirpation or large removal of skin from the chest wall itself. When we are faced with a reconstructive challenge, say, a defect, in skin or soft tissue. Uh, we need to know exactly how much tissue to take from another area of the body and what we can safely take. We're in a situation in this case where there's an excellent source of tissue from the back and just by measuring what we need to fill in from the front, we can then say, okay, I need to take about this much from the back. Certainly, uh, the surgeon needs to know the anatomy and how these operations are done. And this is why a general surgeon or a cancer surgeon will work uh, with a plastic surgeon maybe ahead of time to say, hey, I think we're going to want to have a plan to do something because the general surgeon may say, I think I'm going to have a, a defect that's going to need to be closed. And rather than calling urgently saying, come help, come help right now, calling ahead of time and saying, maybe we can try to plan this to make it easier. Well, one of the things that's nice and the reason I like really like working with Drs. Hall and Rye is that it's always a team effort. They come in and help me out. It's always nice to have more hands in terms of doing the mastectomies. And then yes, typically I'll stick around and help them with the reconstruction if it's necessary. In this particular case where we're considering a potential breast reconstruction in the future, and certainly for a woman's breasts, cosmesis, and the aesthetics of the final outcome are also very, very important. Uh, a flap would do much better. Uh, we had talked about options, and again, in Terry's case, in this case, we felt that taking the skin from the back would probably work best. The way that's performed is there's a blood supply that comes through the latissimus dorsi muscle, the lat muscle, and that blood supply stays intact. So when we make the incisions on the back and through the skin into the muscle, uh, we want to keep that blood supply intact. And that's done by making sure that we don't uh, dissect any of the blood vessels that are keeping this flap alive. Once we know that we've done that appropriately, then the tissue is actually turned under the skin in what we would call a tunnel. We make a tunnel under the skin through the armpit essentially and through the side and that whole bit of tissue, the muscle and the skin, is then passed through the tunnel to the front of the chest where the defect is. Once that has been done, then that tissue can be sewn in in the appropriate manner. For this type of a surgery, typically um, there's some discomfort in the back area where we've removed the tissue, but it's usually not too bad. And frequently a patient will feel ready to go home potentially the next day. Uh, sometimes a patient may need to stay a few days longer, but usually it, it can be a day and they're back at home. 
Certainly there are pain pills uh, to keep any discomfort in control and under check. Um, there are also usually some rubber drains that need to be placed. There's a lot of fluid that is produced by the body after any type of an injury and this is no exception. And so there are these rubber drains that are usually in and they can be in for a couple of weeks, sometimes even longer. I typically like to see a patient back uh, in my office about a week after, provided everything's doing well. Um, we might see them in another week and hopefully pull out some of those drains. And then we would see them periodically after that, just to ensure that the patient's doing well. Welcome back to The Surgeons. I'm here with Dr. Hall and Dr. Wright. We just got back from the operating room. I think you saw a lot of interesting footage. I like these two to tell us about what you saw. I'm going to start with you since Dr. Hall apparently can't say anything right now. <laughs> so uh, I did uh, bilateral mastectomies. I started on the side where she had had the prior surgery. And the reason why we needed to do the reconstruction like we talked about is because she had a very large wound from her prior surgery site and from where the new mass was. So she probably had, I'm guessing, radiation, chronic wound, Absolutely. wasn't healing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the mastectomy wasn't at this point for breast cancer. It Correct. was for chronic pain, Correct. chronic wound, et cetera. Exactly, okay. yes. And so we started on that side. I removed the tissue and it left us with a pretty good sized wound. Can you show the audience how big the wound is? Probably about does that seem about right? Yay big. Yay big. Yeah, that's, a, that's medical terms. Yeah. <laughs> so when you first sent the patient over to see me, mm -hmm. and I had a long discussion with the patient as well, obviously she was having issues about a lot of surgery that she had had in the past. Right. And we had talked about what's going to be the best thing for her. Right. And at that time we sort of decided that rather than start the actual reconstruction of the breasts, mm -hmm. the thing to do would just be so like you said, take care of that wound, fill that big hole. She was mm -hmm. going to have a large defect mm -hmm. on that one side. And the plan will be now to talk about breast reconstruction and actually building new breasts. Right. But that was actually kind of a big area that you had to remove. Mm -hmm. That's probably more than you would say in most individuals. Oh, absolutely. We just had to make sure, I mean, for her peace of mind to get, you know, that was the, the biggest thing behind this, the thought process of this surgery was to remove the breast because she had had uh, the original surgery and then two biopsies after. She was just tired of dealing with it. Plus so, the radiation yeah. Plus that the radiation. she had undergone. Exactly. There's a lot for her to go through and she's been through the toughest part. She Absolutely. is going to go through some more, mm -hmm. but from your standpoint, everything's taken care of, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So we're going to look forward to having her on future shows as well, doing more stuff. I think it's going to be a journey, right? We're going Absolutely. to see this operation, her subsequent reconstruction, we're going to hear from her. Excellent. Well, we want to thank Dr. Wright for coming in today. Uh, couldn't be happier that you agreed to come on and spend time with Dr. Rye, because I know I have to do it and it's a real pain. It's tough, let me tell you. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming. We'll look forward to seeing your husband. And good luck with your upcoming youngster. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. All right, we'll see you next time on The Surgeons. Thank you for coming. Thanks for coming. Mm -hmm.